Hi, everyone. Welcome to the School Now Academy webinar. We're going to pause a few moments here while some attendees jump in. And so just give us a moment here before we start. Thanks for joining us. See people, people are piling in as, as we, as we wait. So um, again, thanks for joining us. I'm Jay Cooper and with, with me is, as Lauren Rooley White as co-host. And we'll be going through today's navigating the shift in school communications. We'll start in just a moment. All right, here we go. Navigating the shift in school communications. Thanks again for joining us. We've got uh, we've got some a lot of school and PR communicators on board, some superintendents, IT people, and uh, others, administrators in the school districts and schools. And we really appreciate your time. Uh, today's agenda will be going over first the trends in, cha in the changing landscape and school communications, some of the challenges and opportunities. We'll review the digital channels and what's working and what's not working for schools. And then assessing your communications, some tips on how to see where your communications stand. And then finally, a due diligence and a planning checklist. So first off, the changing landscape in school communications. There's a tremendous amount of scrutiny and transparency uh, these days. Those are the, really the mantras for, for schools and I'm gonna go ahead and say so long here on my video and let you focus on the slides. We have uh, in the news, I mean, uh, they talk about communication audits. The public is is uh, demanding that uh, schools be, be a little more sophisticated and savvy with their communications. Uh, PR agencies are being called in. Do we, do we handle things internally? A combination of both. Uh, there's parents' frustrations over a number of issues, uh, including including mobile apps. So uh, it's it's a different it's a different ball game these days. Uh, we're going to first uh, take a look at some of the key issues driving communication strategies in 2023 and beyond. For superintendents, uh, these are the top issues that keep floating to the top, budget constraints, how to manage those and balance those limited resources, uh, educational equity, you know, ensuring fairness and access to the resources, uh, regardless of the cultural backgrounds or socioeconomic status, and eliminating those barriers, uh, teacher shortages, uh, recruiting and retaining quality educators, uh, parent engagement, uh, encouraging parental involvement at, at every turn, and then keeping up with the changes. These are the major issues that superintendents are facing. But for the PR and school communicator, uh, crisis communications is, is still important. Uh, certainly it uh, came, uh, reached a boiling point during the pandemic uh, a couple of years ago, but still, uh, still a very uh, key uh, driver for what's uh, what's shaping a communication or PR uh, person's uh, daily agenda, uh, community and and uh, public engagement. Uh, uh, they have uh, community members have concerns about uh, transparency and uh, involvement in decision making. Uh, nationwide, uh, people are less trusting of governmental agencies, and uh, th that unfortunately. Uh, can apply to certain school districts. Uh, there's the uh, rookie communicator phenomena at work. More new professionals are entering the field. A recent ENSPRA survey shows that 10% uh, of the school communication pros have less, uh, one year or less of experience in the field. So, uh, and that leads to where we are with really this presentation, and that is uh, communications infrastructure. Uh, these are multiple methods and channels like websites, and emails, apps, social media. These multiple methods and channels uh, to communicate to all stakeholders and how quickly these systems are adopted is key. So with that, uh, technology is another area. IT directors, these are the concerns that, that they have. Uh, systems integration making certain that various applications and systems work together with SIS, uh, CMS, mobile apps, they all have to work in concert. 
uh, online and blended learning, again, came to the fore with the pandemic. And so these are issues, AI, how, how schools are, are going to be introducing and using AI in various aspects of school operations, ranging from curriculum to communications. And then uh, we've got project-based learning. And then that next thing, okay, how, how can technology support not only project-based learning, but what's that next thing out there? And so there's a lot on an IT manager's plate these days. And school and some we want to recognize some school board communication trends. Uh, the the uh, school boards are being asked to expand their board meeting communications and enhance their school board's uh, visibility on their website. And uh, they're asking for uh, more dialogue between the board and the public. So how well your district adapts to these changes uh, in communication habits will have a dramatic impact on your level of engagement. Uh, technology is changing fast. Families are adopting to new ways to communicate. It's important that schools adapt these to these as well. So let's take a look at the digital channels that are at your disposal. The, uh, we've got email. Uh, text and voice, uh, mobile app, social media, video, and website, of course. It's important not to know, uh, only know and embrace these channels, but know when and how to use them. Now, let's start with email, which is the granddaddy of uh, digital school communication. Still very effective and still very much uh, kind of the, uh, the go-to for many schools and school districts. Majority of people have email addresses. Uh, it's, uh, it's a personal way to communicate. Email addresses or phone numbers are required for many other, many services that, uh, that uh, schools provide. Email officially documents a lot of the communications, which, which uh, you know, makes it all official. And it's easy to add links to emails. Like uh, it's a great vehicle, for example, uh, distributing newsletters. Schools are doing that. Uh, it's easy to manage. Uh, it's uh, especially, uh, it's a great form of communications uh, uh, since its conception. There's high open rates with the email. And however, some of the drawbacks, it's often, they're often over, over, uh, overused. Um, we get uh, often the, uh, excuse me, uh, back up here, the uh, uh, risk of getting caught in spam filters and so, some of these uh, uh Email systems have a lack of integration with uh, SIS. And uh, again, email tends to be uh, often overused. I, I was, uh, it's, not, it's not uncommon for when we talk to parents, they say, yeah, we get, we get so many emails from our, from our school. It's like, I don't, I, don't, I don't open most of them. And so uh, how, in, how you use your emails is, is very, very important. And uh, uh, it, you can use it in, in concert with some of these other channels and be a little more strategic with it. Uh, there's a couple of tips on email. You can, uh, there's optimal times to send uh, midweek, the midweek days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Those are the best optimal times. Uh, you want to make sure when you do put an email together that you're optimizing the content using the images, uh, uh, the length of the emails, they tend to be long, tend to be too long. Uh, I mentioned linking them to newsletters, which is great, or embedding a newsletter within the email. Uh, and then uh, even such things as the subject line, you know, carefully uh, wording your subject line can, can make or break whether an email is open or not. And so, uh, you know, pay attention to what's working for you if, when you're using your emails. Uh, and of course, you got to make sure you're, Following the uh, legal responsibilities, you have to have the uh, uh, the ability to unsubscribe to the emails and uh, you know make sure your emails are are mobile friendly. Uh, the next channel we're uh, discussing is Facebook Messenger. It's uh, built into Facebook. It's a, it's really a hybrid social media and text channel. Uh, it's you know, again, it's it's essentially built right into Facebook. A very high adoption rate. Uh, because because it is so automatic, uh, it connects your 
your school with your friends and your organizations. And at last count, it's uh, over 140 million users. So, uh, and the and the demos on it are that it's reaching uh, it's reaching your younger parents, um, ages uh, uh, I think 25 to 34. Text and voice is the next uh, uh, digital channel uh, category. Uh, school notification systems they deliver large volumes of the time sensitive messages through SMS text. Uh, in addition, messages can be delivered uh, via push notifications through mobile apps and social media. West website, desktop alerts, uh, good for school closings, early dismissals, lockdowns, any of the, again, the time critical stuff, emergencies and crises that uh, that, that arise. Uh, also can be used for more than just emergencies, though. Uh, they can be used for improving engagement and ultimately achievement in, in your school district. Uh, parents and other users can set preferences to get exactly the kinds of information they want and how they want it. And it can be uh, uh, district level, school level, classroom level, um, even by department or club or team, whatever it might be. Uh, it's a great way to help manage your your uh, uh, help manage your your school communications. For example, uh, transportation alerts, uh, assignments, attendance, uh, even lunch account balances. Uh, you can set up uh, these kind of notifications and really streamline. How you're communicating with your with your parents. Uh, the next digital channel uh, to make sure is uh, in your arsenal is the mobile app. Uh, and again, automatic notifications, alerts, and emails to uh, newsletters. Uh, branded. This is a great way to to brand your messages and your updates, and provides quick access to other resources like uh, forms and menus and calendars. Uh, depending on the mobile app provider, you can create a custom experience for your parents and uh, put all your digital communication uh, right in their hands. Video. Uh, we list video as a separate channel, but it's really a little different because it's a power tactic when, when it comes to this. It's just the way people want to receive information these days. You know, They like short, quick uh, bursts of video to... to, to uh, to uh, process the information and your school ought to be using it. It's great for campaigns and success stories. Uh, again, it's a very powerful medium uh, for, it's captivating. Uh, it's, uh, they're very, uh, uh, very uh, useful in getting traction for your social media. And everybody's viewing videos these days on just about any, any uh, device. Uh, social media, a category in, its, in and of itself, uh, more schools are embracing social media. Uh, we have uh, had some successful webinars in the past on how to make the most out of social media. Uh, great, again, for, sh for sharing photos and videos, uh, stories and projects and achievement. Uh, you got uh, messages from your principal or superintendent and spotlight uh spotlight certain staff achievements and it can be more than just teachers too you know you get into uh, your support staff your admins uh your your lunchroom uh, personnel and uh, everybody likes to see uh that uh, kind of the uh, warm and fuzzy and the feel good side of your school district and social media is a, a great way to frame that frame all that and uh, the three big ones are uh facebook and, and instagram of course those uh, those two are uh, uh, automatically. You can set up uh, links there, so so you don't have to duplicate your uh, posting efforts. Uh, YouTube channels. More schools are 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 forming YouTube channels and making making the most of those. Uh, X, you know, formerly uh, formerly Twitter, is uh, is a distant third. Fewer schools do have uh, X accounts, but um, still uh, still useful if you're if your school district is a uh, power social media user. And when it comes to social media, you got to make sure you have engagement. It's one thing to have accounts and use them, but it's another thing to use them effectively because it really is all about engagement. Uh, shares, likes, and comments, that's what it's all about. You want to do all you can do to promote this kind of engagement. And you want to uh, cross-promote the school type content across, across channels. Um, again, social media is all about images and videos, so make sure you're using those uh, 
uh, media in your uh, in your in your social uh, posts. And questions and surveys, by the way, are great great ways to boost engagement. Just uh, put a uh, compelling question about out there and and uh, let your uh, school community chime in and get that engagement going. Facebook Live uh, is is uh, is a great is a great tool. It's real time online live streaming function uh, built into Facebook. Uh, it's it's great for uh, any special events you might have. Um, when you do use it, make sure you're promoting promoting that you, that you are uh, uh, broadcasting a, a a live event. Do that ahead of time. And the cool thing about one of the cool things about Facebook Live is it automatically archives all your uh, all your record all, all your uh, live events. And uh, a uh, a tip: make sure you test make sure you test your audio uh, when you uh, when you have a Facebook Live event because uh, oftentimes it's uh, it's uh, neglected or overlooked. I mentioned YouTube channel before. It's uh, you want to encourage subscriptions to your channel. Uh, again, it's uh, uh, likes and comments and favorites. That's that's what you want, and um, you want to make sure again, like like the Facebook Live events, you uh, promote all these great uh, authentic glimpses into your school. Um, and and they don't have to be over. And this goes to any video. They don't have to be overproduced. Um, really, authenticity is the mantra here. Uh, you know, on these self-produced videos, uh, it's it, it shows uh, again uh, whether it's a superintendent, uh, principal. Uh, we were talking yesterday with uh, one of the school communicators that we work with, and and he said uh, their superintendent will uh, will fire up a. a a broadcast from from you know sitting in their backyard and and just uh, uh, give their superintendent's message in a very informal, relaxed way. So don't don't think you got to be sitting behind a desk and and uh, you know look all buttoned up and everything. So uh, you want pers further personalize your school that way. And when you do have a YouTube channel, again, make sure you're promoting it. And that brings us to the uh, really the communications hub of your school district, and uh, and that's your website. It's really the resource and home of all your official content, you know, from calendars to school board minutes. Uh, you know, a website should be designed to engage. Uh, often overlooked in design, uh, website design. It's it's one thing that we uh, school now, formerly as uh, Campus Suite, have prided ourselves on and coming up with uh, great looking websites that are every bit as good looking as they are effective. And uh, by effective, we mean uh, usable and accessible and it's got good, clean navigation, intuitive navigation. And your website uh, too can uh, needs to integrate with all your digital channels. And we call, we call the school website or district website your, your digital front door. So it's important you, uh, you spend some time uh, on, on that. Uh, bring, bring this up. Uh, you've got all these channels. The communications matrix is is a is a tool that uh, we encourage all school communicators to use. It's really your playbook and checklist to make sure you're using the right channels at the right time. The type of content and uh, is overlaid with the, the channels that are at your disposal. Let's give you an example. Um, here's a here's a scenario one number one of a school delay. You know, school delay requires obviously uh, immediacy. So you're not going to be, you know, sending out. Uh, uh, you're not going to be making videos about it and stuff. But you should, but you are going to be using the the channels that uh, your parents uh, rely on most: and uh, email, uh, social media, uh, text, mobile app, and and of course, a posting on your website. Many. Uh, <clears throat> Many website providers have that uh, ability to have an alert banner pop up on the uh, on the website. So a good, great way to to again uh, have uh, some time sensitive uh, content uh, uh, delivered to your to your school community. Uh, another scenario is a is a is a campaign tax levy or a referendum uh, requires a more comprehensive use of the that employs uh, all kinds of content and uses more channels. 
Uh, it could be a fundraising campaign or a tax or bond levy. Um, so you'll be using uh, a lot more ways to, to deliver that info, email, social media, website. Uh, you can have text and voice alerts. Uh, you know, don't forget to sign up for, uh, you know, registration or vote today. Uh, and, and so when you have, when you have a, a, a content item, it's good to say, okay, are we really using all the channels that we have at our disposal to uh, get this information across? And so often some, some of these, some of these channels are, are overlooked or neglected. So uh, the takeaway here is to align the types of content you have with the proper channel and don't overlook any channel to extend your reach. Okay, so how do we go about assessing your communications? These are some questions to ask you, yourself, and others, uh, other school leaders, other, other functionaries uh, within your uh, school and school district. And when it comes to parent and staff ease of use, one, do you have to log into multiple systems, okay? Uh, that requires a lot of work and off, oftentimes. Uh, parent, uh, brand and image, okay? <clears throat> Is your district and school branding consistent? Oftentimes, there'll, there'll be a disconnect between uh, the, what the district is portraying in their imagery and what each individual school is doing. And then within the school itself, uh, the various departments, and et cetera, they need to be all in, uh, in step with uh, a, a very consistent uh, style guide, if you will, for your brand and image. Uh, accountability in your communications, okay? Ask yourself, are you, are you measuring your engagement efforts, okay? Um, you know, in fact, this might be a good time. Uh, Lauren uh, is uh, uh, one of our uh, associates here. She's our customer success manager, and we have an engagement poll that that uh, that I'm going to uh, ask Lauren to uh, launch here. And uh, the question is, how well are you measuring the engagement effectiveness of your communications? Okay. Uh, We've got uh, your choices are we're doing a great job, uh, not bad, could be better. Uh, I don't think we measure at all our communications effectiveness. And the last, your last choice is, I don't know, which again, uh, these, by the way, these, these responses, these, these responses are anonymous. And uh, as I'm going to take a moment here and uh, allow uh, our, our participants, uh, we've got a bunch of you online today, but we appreciate, again, you, you taking time out of a, a busy uh, school day to, to help us uh, share this information with you. But um, we've got... Okay. Uh, while, they're, while they're taking the poll, we do have a question that came across. It's how often should a school do a survey? Um, how often are they going to be sending these surveys out? Is there a best practice for that? The, uh, it, I guess, A, it depends on what you're surveying. Uh, but uh, one, of the, one of the big surveys that we've uh, distributed and had a great deal of success with is a parent, uh, parent engagement survey. And since, uh, since really it, it, it is what, what uh, school communications is all about. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, end the poll. We got really good participation, um, but yeah, I think I think uh, the beginning of the year obviously is when you want to, or the end of the year uh, might might be as just as effective as determine because in, in your planning, uh, determine you know what what channels what what are your parents' communication preferences, and by getting that baseline information, you're going to uh, you're going to get a uh, a good indicator of where you need you as a district need to uh, uh, address some of the holes you might have in your communications effort. And I'm sharing right now the, the results of the survey. Uh, looks like six uh, percent say they're doing a great job. Congratulations, guys and gals! But uh, by far, it looks like there's a need to uh, implement. Uh, some kind of metrics or measuring 
uh, uh, device in your communications efforts. And we'll talk about that in a little bit later here, but uh, that's the results of the poll. We appreciate you, uh, appreciate you uh, participating. And so uh, you're not alone if you're not measuring your engagements or you think you can do uh, a better job measuring your engagement efforts. Uh, another question to ask your your staff is, are you reaching on your audiences? And that's an increasingly important consideration as it relates to translations and accessibility. Uh, we have uh, obviously multicultural uh, audiences within your district that uh, you wanna make sure you're reaching. And of course, those uh, persons with uh, disabilities uh, need to be uh, taken into account, make sure uh, there aren't any barriers to communications for them. Another key question to ask is staff buy-in and training. You know, there are a lot of, uh, <clears throat> a lot of solutions, a lot of applications, a lot of answers or potential answers for uh, trying to uh, uh, improve your uh, communication solutions. But uh, what about the adoption rate? Is it uh, uh, are are your uh, your staff uh, hesitant to uh, hesitant to uh, use use the solutions? Uh, uh, are you just using the solution du jour? You know, waiting for the next one to come in. So, getting staff buy in and making sure that the training for it is uh, is uh, adequate and easy. And uh, that, those are questions you have to ask yourself. Another one is data integration. This relates to our IT folks. And is there seamless syncing between your communications and your SIS? And uh, we talked before about parent communication preferences. Uh, do parents receive school information how they want it? Uh, increasingly, schools have to deliver the information how parents want it. Want it. Uh, they just can't post stuff to their website or send out countless emails and assume that information is getting through. Uh, parents uh, want information. They need information. They're demanding it more than ever, but they're demanding it when they want it and just how they want it. Uh, and then finally, uh, and this is a bigger question, relates to uh, fiscal and public responsibility. Are you making good, sound business decisions when it comes to your communication solutions? And in, in the case you might have, uh, you might have three, four different provi separate providers, you know, from from email to providers to a mobile app provider to a text and notification, uh, text notification provider to a website, and and you know if you're spending all this, uh, all these resources, time and money on these these disparate uh, uh, suppliers, you know, there might be a better there might be a better way. Um, just so, maybe the time now, Jay, we do have a couple more questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So one of the questions is, uh, can you rank social media platforms? Like what should they use first and second? Or what's the most popular social media platforms? We know about Instagram and Facebook, but is there a specific order that they should be sending these out in? Facebook by by far. And I'm going to yield to uh, to uh, our uh, social media expert, Andrea Gribble, on this. I'm, I'm kind of uh, taking from her taking a cue from her, but Facebook by far is, is the, is the, is the, uh, preferred in, in the, the, the workhorse and, uh, Instagram, of course, has, uh, automatic, uh, li linking built in. So there's no reason, uh, to, to not have an Instagram account as, as more and more people are shifting to Instagram to, to, uh, to connect with their, news and their entertainment and certainly they ought to be able to connect to your your school content and then and then uh it 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 falls off i mean uh uh twitter twitter is is many schools have twitter accounts uh or x accounts i should say but um you know an often overlooked one is 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 linkedin uh more uh uh I don't want to say movers and shakers, but uh, influencers, uh, people serious about their careers and about connecting and networking have LinkedIn accounts. And, and so uh, uh, individuals within your school district, a superintendent or a PR director or an IT manager, they should all be having, uh, uh, they should all have LinkedIn accounts and, and use those accounts to share 
uh, share so, social content uh, on the, on their uh, on their feeds, uh, and, th- and that can be very positive because other you know school board members and other uh, members of the, the school community uh, they likely are are, are uh, uh, working in that realm as well, and so uh, you know make sure that uh, uh, you've got uh, all those bases covered. Um, is there anything else, Lauren, that you want to bring to my attention at this point? Um, yes, they're looking for an example. If anyone has an example to share of a parent engagement survey. A parent engagement survey. Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, we've, we've, uh, we've got one that we could share. Uh, but if others, if other school districts on board, uh, this, this webinar, uh, if, if you, if you want to, uh, send it to our attention, we'll make sure we share that with, uh, not only the person that, uh, asked the question, but also with, uh, everybody who's, uh, signed up for the webinar. Well, what we can do is in our follow-up to attendees, uh, we can share our parent engagement survey with everyone that, uh, is taking part in attending this webinar. Right. And and Dawn Gilbert just wrote in that there's a great survey tool called Parent Pulse. Um, so that's something that you may want to check out, too. Is that Parent Pulse? Pulse. Yes, correct. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. Let's talk about some due diligence and planning. Um, in terms of some liabilities and responsibilities, schools are exposed um, uh, more than ever these days. Uh, there are many privacy and accessibility issues surrounding uh, digital communications. This is to make sure you're protecting uh, the schools and the parents and the, and the staff and the students. So make sure uh, you have the policies in place and follow the legal guidelines uh, and best practices for website, email, social media, uh, and notifications. Uh, there are laws, for example, governing email. Uh, you know, you got to provide a physical address. You got to have a a, a way to opt out of emails, unsubscribe. Um, and even though it's kind of a closed audience, you know, you got parents, there's some that just uh, might test, might test the legal bounds and say, Hey, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to receive information about this, but uh, make sure you honor those opt out requests quickly. Uh, and again, make sure you provide a physical address and, and provide that opt out option. Um, and uh, with notifications, uh, permission is required if it's anything other than an emergency uh, that's deemed an emergency. And that that's kind of open to interpretation. But if you're using notifications, for example, to promote uh, promote a school levy or to promote, promote a bake sale or whatever, uh, you're probably pushing the limits of uh, what uh, notifications ought to be used for. Uh, and again, you can provide... This is uh, the uh, Telephone Consumer Protection Act. Uh, it uh, you can provide a way to uh, have them uh, opt opt out as well. And website accessibility. Uh, this is uh, you can't overlook individuals with disabilities. Uh, school websites are required to be fully accessible, and not only for uh, you know, not just for the parents out there, but students and staff uh, may have disabilities and make sure that uh, your website does follow uh, a WCAG, WCAG, we call it website content accessibility guidelines. Uh, you can set goals and measure uh, your, uh, your communications using things like Google Analytics. Uh, Facebook provides a ton of insights, more than you'll ever need, in fact. Uh, you can have an accessibility audit actually uh, conducted on your website. Uh, and those, those are ways to make sure that you're uh, doing all you can to, to, to engage. And finally, uh, it, it, don't forget the old fashioned way, you know, touch versus tech. Uh, and I know it's, it's not automatic and it's not digital, but you know, a personal phone call, uh, a, a short letter, a short uh, personal email, or even a thank you card, um, uh, you know, beware of technology overload, you know, and, and don't overwhelm your parents uh, with uh, all nothing but digital and, and take that uh, personal approach sometimes. So here's the planning checklist. One, confirm your mission and goals. 
to reach all of your audiences, make sure you're reaching all of your audiences. Uh, see what others are doing. Uh, it could be the uh, district next door. Um, you know, there, there's, I'm sure there's a lot of school districts in, or, in and around your uh, area that uh, are doing it, doing it right. Make sure you master all the channels and don't forget all the channels. Uh, balance your content. Make sure you're not just sending out the bad news. You make sure you're getting all the all the really good news out there. That really helps. In fact, good news can help bury some of the bad news. Uh, embrace your social media to do do that. Uh, ensure your privacy and access. Uh, promote promote what you're doing, and then finally measure, adjust, and then keep keep measuring. And all this, uh, much of this information is a deeper dive. I want to offer up this uh, to all of our attendees. We have a free guide. It's a, a how-to guide for making the most uh, for today's communicators. And uh, you just go to schoolnow.com slash planning, and you have uh, everything you need to know about school communications planning up to date right there. And it's a free download uh, for all of our attendees. And with that, uh, Lauren, do you want to uh, put in a, p a pitch for uh, for uh, School Now, kind of the uh, the sponsors of today's presentation? Absolutely, I can definitely do that. Um, I, I am Lauren Ruley White, and I am the customer success manager here at School Now. Um, school Now is an all-in-one digital platform. It's changing how schools engage. Um, we did have a question in the chat. Uh, does school now pair well with uh, SIS, specifically PowerSchool? And the answer to that is yes. Um, we integrate with the majority of uh, student information systems, PowerSchool included. Um, so we're looking at the current way of sharing information. Um, and we know that sharing information is difficult, uh, especially between schools and districts. Um, and getting information out to your families is sometimes hard because it's a juggling act uh, to manage all the different channels. So we find that districts have scattered communication and have to log into multiple systems um, to get messages across. Uh, School Now actually provides a smart and simple communication tool. Uh, smart in the way that um, we, we can connect with everyone, but simple in the way that schools can share information easily. Um, using the COPE methodology, uh, we create once, publish everywhere, you are able to create the message and send it out to as many channels as you need to. So it can go to your website, mobile app, all of your social media accounts, um, and even through voice and text messaging. Um, and then uh, your parents get to decide or your users get to decide how they want to receive these communications. So they can actually log in, manage preferences, um, connect where they want to connect. So they can toggle on or off urgent general messages, and decide really, it, it puts your user in, in the, uh, to empower them to make the decisions on how they want to receive their messages. Um, and a, again, branding is a huge thing um, with school now, all of your branding's under one roof. That means you use your branding to get out to all of your communica uh, communication channels the exact same way. Um, so you keep a nice and consistent brand throughout. Uh, and that really helps you to focus on what is being shared and not how it is being shared. It takes that heavy um, decision-making off of you and uh, allows you to push it out to all of your social media, all of your um, communications channels all at one time. All right. Great, great. Thank you, Lauren. Uh, and again, thank, thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, a short survey is gonna pop up here as soon as we close out. And uh, any questions we didn't get to uh, answer during the webinar, we'll make sure to follow up with you all. And again, thanks for joining us. We'll see you at the next School Now webinar.